Hello everybody and welcome to episode 8 of Kerbal Space Program Modded Let's Play with me. And we're going to pick up where we left off last episode. So we're back at the VAB, got plenty of cash. First thing we're going to do is take a quick look at where we're going. So, research and development. We really need to get bigger rocket engines. Definitely need the mainsail which comes under heavy rocketry also these little bits and then we need the advanced fuel systems to go alongside that so we get these bigger fuel tanks and then the advanced ones unlock the sort of middle ground tanks after that so yeah and the bigger RCS tanks as well which will come in handy later for docking and then we need to get into the command modules, that gives us the Mark 1 and the can. <coughs> but this is one of the most important things we need to get straight away, is the short term habitation so we can get... Because putting Kerbals in space we need to be able to use this IFI life support and this is the only main tank. There are other ones, the smaller ones, but they just don't hold very much at all. And then command pods, we need these because they the bigger command pods hold three and four Kerbals and also that cup, 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 cupula, cupola module is in there which is part of a space station as well. Electrics we need to push through because it gives us better uh, solar panels, also unlocks another relay dish. Also the bigger batteries which will come in handy. And then the advanced electrics give us the Gorsat, which is another science experiment, but also the refoldable solar panels. And that's where we get Mechja Percent Guidance, which makes flying so much more easy, especially if you're sending up multiple things at a time. It takes a bit of the fun out of the game, but advanced landing we don't really need the airstream stuff so with the space plane the next level on there unlocks the mark 3 system and then a level after that then unlocks the mark 4 cockpits and so on so we can get planes that can actually be big enough to be sent into space from a, t a takeoff on a runway But yeah, that's all the Mark III stuff, which might get us into orbit, but not much further than that, really. But these big tanks here are the ones that are going to get us a plane that's actually capable of getting back into the atmosphere. So yeah, just the all bits, tail pieces, and so on and so forth, the Mark IV system. So we're back to our missions, we've got quite a few uh, uh, space plane, but it's not really a space plane at the moment. And we're going to try and get two of them knocked out quickly here, so as promised in the other episodes I'm going to speed up the video uh, to three times speed whilst we're flying along just to cut out some of the grindy, boring in-flight stuff. Also going to take on a few extra missions here. And that's the networks for Moho I can tune we're nowhere near that yet. We need nuclear engines really to efficiently get to there. Got kick off space tourism, which is a good little bonus. And that unlocks, but the space plane will be good for that because you can hold all like huge amounts of passengers on board for that. Also, want to be able to dock our space plane at a space station 
to refuel and so on and so forth. So I'm just getting rid of the contracts which require us to go above 18,000 meters, which are pointless. So that's testing a drop tank. It's easy enough. I'll take that. So another rescue mission which we'll take. Got a little Swedish there. there. So we got yeah. the two rescue missions, which we'll get to later on. to make any adjustments to it, it flew fine last time. I'm gonna give Valentino a go in the plane this time. Yeah. So it's a waypoint manager, we're gonna do the bottom two contracts. Just looking for the waypoint marker. It's actually right underneath us because it's so far away. There it is there, look. Damn. So here we go. A bit of a derpy takeoff here because I forgot to put SAS on. So well. Take off from the grass instead. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. There we go. Not the smoothest takeoff in the world, but it works, so. Yeah. So once I get some height, gonna make the turn towards the target. Thinking, yeah, let's do this one first, not so much of a turn. Yeah. So we're pretty much on course. Super speed, <laughs> four times speed plus three times video playback. I'm just checking the. What's happening is the IFI life support is interfering with my warp because the pods that need rescuing have less than three days' life on them. But it doesn't count down until you actually start to get close to them. So I disabled the warp interruption there. Little adjustments in flight. I can see Valentina on the horizon. Valentine, whatever the star's called. Close to the 
my mass where the contract is. So I need to stay fairly on course now. Okay, so dropping the engine power, put the gear out, trying to kill some airspeed. Killed the engine completely. on so that puts the air brakes up don't need to be so delicate now with these big fat landing gears so we're just going to drive over waypoint down but we need the antenna up Make sure I don't go too fast along the ground and smash my plane up. There we go, we've got that one. So now it's just a case of getting this last one. Pick up all the science on the way. Crew report. Materials bay. EBA. So throttle up and back up to this last one. So as I said, we're going to be just trying two missions in this one, which means we're going to have to take off after landing for the first time. It's always interesting, trying to find a decent spot to take off from. Just waiting to slam on the brakes.
that's that contract complete and now I'm looking down here and seeing this flat patch after this hill and then it slopes up it's always easiest to take off when you're going at a decent speed and then slope up so I'm just going to control the speed down the hill meters per second bouncing around lost the aerial there I thought I lost something else but I didn't it was just the aerial but we're back up in the air so we can head over to the next contract See me checking the ship there, I think it's something else had blown, but it was just a communitron. Stops us getting more science because we can't transmit the science we've got already, but at the same time, it um, doesn't really matter that much with regards to completing the contract. So, back up to three times speed, and we're going to fly over. See me trying to find out what actually blew up. Let's do a nearly 180 turn there. And off we go, and it's quite a distance to this one, but acceleration helps so much. high up here, we need to certainly get down a lot lower than this. Time acceleration, so we're back down below 5,000 meters now. looking roughly where we are. Trying to work out if I could do that one as well but I probably could have reached it but I opt out of it this time because there's also another contract coming up which is at the South Pole so I decided to hit them two at the same time. Also find another co Anomalies contract which is quite close to that other one. So two is enough on this flight. Consider we're going to recover the entire vessel as well. This was interesting as I got to this one. I really thought it was going to be one of those contracts that um, are actually in the mountains and you kind of need to parachute down to it because there's just no way you can land anywhere near. And if you walk, it'll take you about 30 minutes walking to get there. So, I was getting a bit wary of this one.
So we've just got to clear these mountains. I was hoping I wasn't going to lose enough height to crash into them, but fortunately I got just enough height. Dropping around the gear already. And I see the nice side there, it's over the other side of the mountains on our little plane over there. the engine coming down really need to lose some speed so the air brakes go up and now we're doing okay should be able to land it on this pass Bam. nice and easy so I decided to go for the single one on its own first These are seismic readings that I need to take here. Done. That's why I realise I can't send the data because I blew the area up. Keep that. Materials bay for when it gets recovered. Spin round. Try and get these two. This is still sped up double speed this section. That's why I realised the other one's actually closer. Need some throttle. Go, go, go. Slowly sliding down the mountain. That's that one done. I just need this last one. That is that mission complete. So just need to find a flat spot because you need to come to a full stop to be able to uh, recover the vessel. So that's flat enough. There we go. Mike will recover it along with all the science on board. <coughs> so that was two contracts done. Got enough to unlock one more thing, I think. I think it's going to be the short term habitation. The other good thing about the MIFI life tanks is you can actually put a Kerbal in there, which is what allows us to run these rescue missions. As much as I want the Mech Jeb already, I need to be able to carry more Kerbals. So that's what I bought. I'm doing this low resolution scanner curb in at the moment, but I kind of realised that my orbit isn't polar enough and I could start to take it out to the um, height that I want it to. So the first thing I need to do is clear away some of the debris that's been left all over the place from my launches. recover the debris on the planet from the space plane crash. Or just gives me a few extra credits. Oh 
Okay, so it's comes up. See, it's still pretty in low to the planet. Well, I remember it's 500 kilometers you could go out to with the uh, scan radar thingy. So I'm gonna. When you're changing the actual. Um, Oh, okay, I can't remember what it's called now. It's not the eccentricity, it's the inclination of the orbit. You need to have a fair distance in between you and the actual thing you're orbiting because when you change the inclination, it can kind of like put you in the path. And I don't want to skim into the atmosphere during my burn. So go just below the 500 kilometer point, make it bigger. So use flight computer for this. So node execute. Go. Need to engage the engine. Like that. Put the thrust limiter down for accuracy. Time accelerate up to the node. There we go. Fire it now. There we go, and then it's just a case of adding a circularization node at the top. That automatically bring us around to the node. Time accelerate up to it. See it's still scanning but it never actually gets the pole because its inclination is quite low down. It's Kerbal alarm clock kicking in. You can also see its communication with the CompSat relay. CompSat 1, 2, 3, 4 network around so I'm constantly in contact with mission control which is good for a man to stuff. So yeah, you can see how not polar this orbit is and I'm about to change that by adding it maneuver right there. But increasing your tail also increases your apoapsis, so you have to compensate for that. Get there. That. I want to keep it reasonably circular. Although this is in its final position by no means, so. Here we go, that's pretty circular. And it puts us much more over the pole so we can catch more of the planet. Every time it passes over the equator, obviously the planets turn somewhat, so it, every time it does an orbit it maps more and more of the actual planet. So just accelerate up to that node. Go. It's burning now. Just clearing off all them contracts. 
tracks we did in the space plane. There we go. So it's much more polar orbit now, a bit more distance. So if you look at Scansa, you see the waveform of where I was mapping before. So if I do the time acceleration, you can see that it's going much closer to the poles now. And a much more vertical sort of sweep of the planet. So it will cover a, a fair bit more of the planet in a shorter space of time. And if you could do a contract with a satellite that's already there, why the hell? So that's all looking good. You can see that we're making progress on the low resolution scale. That's all good, and that's pretty much where I leave it for today, I think. But there's one more thing, I'm just looking for uh, contracts that are available, and I see a couple more rescue ones have shown up. So we've now got four rescue missions on the go, and we can definitely do orbit around Kerbin, although two of them are quite far out. We do have two in a very close orbit there, so we'll be able to probably pick them both up in the same mission. And then we have the two further out, which is going to take a bit more work. So that's it, and that's where I leave it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and come back next time for more early game Kerbal Space Program. See you soon.